Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be filming a part two for tips for college freshmen. If you have not seen part one already, the link is in the description box below. That one is focused on study habits and how I achieved a 4.0 GPA at my college. This video will be answering questions that I got about research, extracurriculars, Greek life, things like that. The first question I got was, do you need to do research to get into medical school? The short answer is no. You do not need to do research to get into a medical school. It is not a mandatory requirement to get admitted into a medical school. There are actually some medical schools around the country with very specific mission statements that don't necessarily place a lot of emphasis on research. One of those schools is UCR School of Medicine, so if you are interested in UC Riverside School of Medicine and you look on their website, you read about their values, they really are focused on fostering primary care physicians who are going to work in the Inland Empire of California, a really underserved area. That is their mission. They say this over and over on their interview day. They're really passionate about it. And because of that reason, they're not necessarily super focused and emphasizing you to have tons of publications or anything like that in your application. They really are focused on community health and serving the Inland Empire. Having said that, if you are applying to, let's say, MD, PhD programs, then of course you should probably have some research. It's just important to look at your specific goals, look at the schools you're applying to, research their mission statements, look at their values, and, uh, see, and that will help you determine which schools you should be aiming for. If you're going to do research, make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Don't do it to pad your resume, do it because you genuinely like the lab that you're in. Whatever you put on your application, it's all fair game for the interviewer to ask you a lot of questions about it. So the second question I got a lot was, did I do research? And I did. I was in a biochemistry lab ever since sophomore year. I also did a little bit of clinical research as well. Now, I chose those things because, again, I liked it. My biochem lab in particular, I love the graduate student I worked under. She's my mentor. She's also now my friend. I mean, I always come to her advice, even now having graduated. And joining that lab, meeting her and the other undergraduates on the team were, was one of the best decisions I made in college. Well, even though I did do research, it was not the biggest part of my application. I think my application was more was more focused on projects that I started with that were focused on community health, health education, things like that. So even though I did it, it was not the biggest part of my application. Uh, the set, next thing is how do you find labs? So you can go about this in a variety of ways. If you're at UCR, the way I did it was I just found people on undergraduate research portal. So this is an online database of labs and their descriptions. You can go through, look at some of the descriptions, find what interests you the most and send emails out. The second way is to just cold email. So you can go through faculty profiles, email them with your resume saying who you are, the year in school, why you're interested in that specific lab. Now. Uh, I think in general, when you cold email, you won't always get an email back, and that was my experience as well. But eventually, if you're persistent, someone will email you back, and uh, you can go from there. Another way is to simply ask a professor you really like. So some of my friends did this, where they took classes with professors, they went to the office hours, they did well in the classes, they established good rapport, and they asked to be part of the lab, and they were able to. If you go about this method, just make sure that the professor is familiar with you, he or she knows your face, just so it's not too awkward when you ask. The next question I got was, how do you find extracurriculars and student organizations on campus? So again, you can go about this in a multitude of ways. I think the first one being asking upperclassmen. Upperclassmen are great resources because they not only can give you advice about student organizations, you can ask about professors they've taken, tips for certain classes, cool study spots around campus that you didn't know before, things like that. If you go to UCR, there is a thing called Highlander Link, which is an online portal with a list of all the student orgs on campus. 
Another way is to join your Facebook group. So I think with most universities, when you say that you're going to a certain college, there's usually a Facebook group called Class of Blank. So I was class of 2020. So I joined the Facebook group and then during the years, a lot of student orgs would post in it about fundraisers they were having, events they were holding, and it was really easy to get involved. I think during your freshman year, I've said this before, but join as much as you can, find out what interests you, go out of your comfort zone, get involved, meet people, have fun, and then later on you can narrow all your activities down to just a couple of things that you really like. Just make sure you don't spread yourself out too thin later on. So the next thing I got asked about was Greek life. Should you join a sorority, a fraternity, and I will say that, so there are different types of sororities and fraternities, right? There are social ones, there are cultural ones, there are professional ones. Professional ones meaning like a pre-business frat, a pre-med frat, things like that. So I would say these are just basically like student organizations. If you join one, cool. If you don't, that's okay too. If you join one, make sure you're joining it because you like it. Don't join it to pad your resume or to say that you're part of something, join it because you like it. I did join a social sorority in my junior year of college and I did so because I wanted to rush and I wanted the experience and I'm glad I did it. In the end, I realized that it just wasn't a priority of mine and I was also getting ready to apply at the end of the year so I just didn't have time to go to all the events. So if you're part of it, any of these organizations, the fraternity, sorority, and you want to put it on your application of medical school, make sure that you can talk about it in a meaningful way. I would advise you to hold some type of leadership position or host an event, be part of the philanthropy team, for instance, or do something in it. Don't just be a member, just because you will be asked to talk about it in your interview probably, or you will be expected to write about it for sure on your application. The last question I got was, how do you balance a social life with academics and studying being a pre-med? And I'll say, yes, it's definitely doable to have a balance between work and play. You just have to be responsible, be disciplined, and I think it all comes down to time management. It's definitely important to have fun in college and to be happy because you cannot spend every second of your day studying. So I did get questions about the party scene at UC Riverside specifically, and I'll keep my answer short. I'll say that yes, there's a party scene like every college um, out there. I think that there's pretty much always something to do every Friday night, every weekend there's something to do. If you like to dress up and go out to party, yes, there's um, opportunities for you to do so. If you don't like doing that type of stuff though and you want to stay in and play board games or video games, you can do that as well. I think really what's key to having a balance is to have friends who are like-minded like you and to have, who have similar interests. Surround yourself and find people who find a circle of people who like doing the same things that you like to do to de-stress. Um, but those are all the tips that I have and I think I addressed all the questions. So thank you all for reaching out to me, asking me these things. I hope this was helpful. Bye.